All right, guys. So gonna do a quick it or. All right, guys. So gonna do an install video here. Uh, I'm not gonna show everything step by step, mostly because this is uh, I'm already deep into the project, uh, relating to other things. But I'll show you some. I thought I'd show you some uh, the particulars about installing this pan. Some of the things I've found, and just give you some close ups in case you're looking at this yourself and uh, you're looking for more information. So. This is the the 5.2 version of the 12 quart road racing oil pan from Ford Performance. So this is the same one that was developed to run on the FP350S. So this sucker is huge. It holds 12 quarts. It's a lot, it's a lot of oil. So that's going to be really great for us. And it's got a really nice, uh, very complex. Let me see if I can get better light for you. So it's got a very nice trap door system. If you look closely in there, you can see a trap door there, a trap door on the back, there's one on this side, and then there's one right here that leads down into the main oil galley. So this uh, Ford has said, you know, they, they when they were talking about it, they said they put a lot of work into developing on how, uh, how much force it takes to open the trap doors, the positioning. So everything's been tweaked and designed specifically for this motor in this, this type of car. So uh, this should be the pan to use for the FP350S, you know, so the, or I should say for the 5.2, whether it be a cross plane or a flat plane. So very excited to put this on and, and see how things work out. I'm putting it on mostly, it was always a plan, but I've prioritized because I've, my, apparently I'm leaking out of the oil pan that I put on either due to a bad seal or a crack or something. So I'm putting this on now to get it out of the way and hopefully fix an oil leak uh to continue our exploration uh this is going to be the pickup for it this is this pickup is unique to the 5.2 specifically the 5.2 oil pump so this is a unique part um that you could so if you go buy this uh pan you need to make sure you get this i got mine as a package deal it comes with everything here on the table i believe it was about 15 just under or just about 1600 dollars delivered it's a, a very very pricey kit compared to like a moroso or a canton but if you search moroso and you search canton you'll find a lot of very mixed reviews where with the four performance uh, oil pans are generally fairly well liked and and not very many people talk about them leaking so i'm gonna go ahead i went ahead and went this direction um confident on that so uh, if you're going this direction, just make sure you get this part number. I'll put both part numbers in the uh, the description of the video so you can make sure you get the right one. But essentially, this goes into the oil pump housing this end. Uh, the little tab here screws in through one of the, you replace one of the main bolts with uh, one of the ones provided in the kit. And then this uh, is secured again through another main bolt further back into the, um, further back in the block. So in addition to the pickup tube here, it comes with these two new bolts. So these parts, the everything below here will act as your traditional main bolt. And then you have two ways to screw this down. One is uh, the, the part that goes next to the oil pickup. That'll slide on here and then you'll use this nut to sink it down and tighten it down. And then for this guy, for whatever reason, this is an interesting way to do it. I'm not entirely sure why they chose this, but uh, and then for this one, you'll use this as essentially a spacer, like that. It'll sit under there like that, you know, underneath the engine. Uh, that little tab will go here, and then you use this little bolt to tighten it down and secure it. Interesting little way to do it, but that's the way they've designed to do it, so we'll follow that. Uh, last remaining items that, are, that come in the kit are gonna be a new oil pump seal, so make sure you want one of those. And then they give you all new bolts for the oil pan. All right, so those are all the parts. Uh, the one part it does not come with is gonna be, uh, this is like a, a supercharger oil drain back or a, a temperature sensor or something along those, uh, or, or oil level sensor, sorry, uh, along those uh, lines. So this I believe is a 3 8 NPT. I'll put a correction on the screen if that's wrong, but uh, what I plan to do is actually get a 90 that comes out of this and then use this to drain my uh, P Peterson breather can into. So this is something that, uh, that'll make more sense when I showed in the video, but uh, this is something that I got off the FP350S video from American Muscle. The oil breather can, the oil air separator slash Peterson breather can sits up in the oil, or sits up in the engine bay, sorry. and the rather than let it get filled up and then need to empty it all the time it just drains down so i found with this new motor with the uh or i should say with this new uh, 
higher performance motor, I'm getting a lot more blow by, so it's filling up a lot faster. I, I was filling a Peterson breather like every two track days, so it's definitely uh, pushing a lot more oil through the, the uh, crankcase, or out of the crankcase, crankcase breather. So this is gonna be a much better uh, way to go for me rather than filling that up you just hook it hook the hose up to the bottom of the, the can so it immediately drains back into the oil pan so that'll be really nice but keep in mind if you're not doing that you're gonna need a bolt to fill this hole because that won't come with the kit all right so as i mentioned we have other work going on that'll be in a different video but uh, i've dropped the k member so as far as i understand the only really two ways you can do this is you can pull the hole and you can pull the engine out of the car or you can drop the k member i've chosen to drop the k member and work underneath uh, i just got done doing the rear fixing the rear main seal on this so i really didn't want to pull the transmission off and remove the engine and go through all that so i chose to go down this path so k member out fairly easy i think it took me like an hour not too bad so now we'll have access to the oil pan up there so uh, you do not have the room with the k member attached in its normal points to drop it all the way down and get access to everything so i'm going to go ahead and or so i went ahead and dropped the k member to give that access so now we're good to go so i'm going to go ahead and get started by taking those bolts off and we'll take a look there and see if we can find out where the oil leak was coming from but like I said, the, uh, you know, the goal of this is really to get rocking and rolling and get that uh, put on. So we'll go ahead and, and do that now. All right, so I think I found our problem. <laughs> that is not good. So for whatever reason, I don't know how that happened. It's a very bizarre type of fail. I shouldn't say it's bizarre. I just don't know what did it. Um, could be a couple different things, but either way, this would clearly cause our problem. When I did the rear main seal, I don't remember seeing that. So either I'm blind as a bat or I did it then. But the only thing I can think of is maybe when I was tightening down the rear main cover. But anyway, so rear main seal is, or <laughs> the oil pan seal was clearly the cause of our leak. So that is good to know. I'm happy that I've definitively found what was leaking, which should make uh, going forward much better. Or I should say, I, I should have much higher confidence going forward. So underneath the car here, <clears throat> I know it's a little dark, my apologies for that, but I got everything off that this, just in case you're freaking out, is the um, few, uh, oil levels, dip, oil dipstick, there we go, that's a word, oil dipstick, so not worried about that, um, although it did give me a heart attack when I was pulling the oil pan off and my brain hadn't worked yet, I was, thought I saw metal, <laughs> but anyway, so we're all good, so uh, I need to replace the seal there, for the oil pump housing, the bottom where the pickup is, or where the pickup goes in, and then we will put the pickup in, uh, and then, tie up, or I should say, first thing we need to do is uh, put the seal in, and then we need to put the new bolt in the mains, to, so we can see our oil pickup, and uh, uh, I'm gonna go get those tightened down. The I'll put the, the torque value on uh, the screen now, but, so we're gonna get those in, uh, get everything in place and then we'll go to position the uh, oil pickup tube and we'll see how that looks all right so we are good to go one thing i should note uh if you're freaking out about the color of the oil that's because it has dye in it from when i was trying to find the leak so i run ams oil dominator so normally it's a, a red ish orange right now because it's on black stuff and uh, it's got light on it it's showing us this really nasty puke color but uh, so don't worry about that. So we got the two bolts in, um, one up here it, with spacer installed, and then the one up there, a uh, new seal. So next up, what we gotta do is we gotta go get the uh, oil pickup tube and slide it in here. And there's a the thing about it, the amount of space it has that we need to uh, cover real quick. So I'm gonna go grab those and get them ready, and then I'll cover the uh, spacing part. All right, so I was unable to show you this before I had to tighten it down because it, it was fighting me on staying in the uh, in the housing because of the seal being so tight. So I had to uh, install it formally, but just to walk you through on that gap I was talking about. So when this is fully inserted in the hole here, just like as you can see there, uh, there should be uh, eight hundredths gap between the bracket here and the end of the the nut here essentially so i'll put a picture on the screen to point out where that's uh where it's easier to see but essentially when this is bottomed out inside the housing there should be a gap there that's what ford recommends uh so essentially just to 
to summarize, you're gonna be putting quite a bit of pressure upwards into the housing. You're really squashing it up into the housing. So that essentially there's positive pressure up pushing it into the housing. It's not just holding it in there, it's shoving it up. So just keep that in mind. All right. Uh, so next up is we're gonna test fit the, how the oil pan uh, fits and make sure that you know this works. So what what I'll do here is I'll measure from the bottom of the oh sorry I'll measure from the bottom of the block here down to where this sits. Measure that into the pan, uh, uh, mock install the pan, and then I'll use the oil fill hole or one of the other holes to see the gap. All right, small correction to the above. Uh, you have to put the windage tray on before you <laughs> install the pickup tube. So keep that in mind. Don't be dumb like me. So uh, now that that's in, going to go ahead and install the oil pan. So the one difference uh, I'm noticing in the, the bolts that are supplied with the pan versus the bolts that came off uh, the OEM pan is one, these are shorter. So make sure you use the ones that come with the kit. But uh, the kit only comes with two of the ones with, uh, I don't even know what kind of bolt this is, but the one with a secondary thread on top of the nut. And the one I pulled off, the OEM one, had four. So, I I mean, the, the actual bolts, the same size, the same diameter, all that good stuff, it's just the fact that it has the ability for you to uh, attach things to it and use it as an anchoring point for the wiring harness. So the only one I'm aware of that you actually need, at least this is in my setup, it's gonna be if you're underneath the car, I, I'll just show you, the front driver's side corner. So this one right here, the front driver's side corner, that's the only one. So I'm gonna go ahead and install this and, and get everything locked down and then I'll let you know how the install went and we'll, we'll double check clearances and all that kind of stuff. But uh, just keep that in mind when you're installing yours. All right, so we got everything installed back, uh, everything is reinstalled in the car. Uh, clearance looks really great uh, so I took this bracket off the bracket that was right here uh, that attached it to the bell housing I had to take that off to get this to work um, honestly I think stuff can't really move a lot so I think that one was redundant uh, it, I mean if you can figure out if you want to fashion your own that was pro that would probably be a pretty good idea but I'm not too worried about it to get this so that it didn't rub on the side of the sorry there we go. To get uh, the lines here so that they didn't rub on the side of the oil pan, I had to bend the bracket out. So you don't need to bend any hoses. Just uh, I just pulled on this bracket, bent it up a little bit, and that gave me additional clearance. You can't pull on it too much because this is a very rigid section of this hose that, um, wow, the way, way overexposure, that ties in here uh, to the transmission line. So you, you don't have a lot of flexibility, but you can get just enough to give you the, the uh, clearance you need. So all good there. And then just to cover what it looks like, tons and tons of uh, clearance around the oil pan here. Sorry, I know this this is not the kind of camera to be in the dark here, but tons of clearance. So you could easily drop this engine. I think the half a. I know. I think there are a couple mounts out there that'll drop half an inch. And let me see if I can get you. Act. Uh, I don't think I can get anywhere with the camera, but if you look up in there, you do have half and more than I'd say three quarters to an inch of room between the bottom of the pan and the steering rack. So I'm pretty sure you could drop this if you were okay with it hanging down further in the car or uh, further underneath the car. Um, so keep that in mind. Uh, only area that I'd say is of note for most folks, I think if you're running long tubes, is there is not a lot of clearance here between uh, at least these headers. These are American racing headers. I mean, there's probably a quarter inch between the header and the edge of the oil pan here. So that's something to keep in mind, so. All right, guys, so that's gonna go ahead and do it for me for today. Um, like I said, it went, to, went together fairly well for me. If you want to uh, use ARP studs for those two mounts with the uh, oil pickup, you're going to need to make sure that you get that taken care of beforehand. I'm happy to provide any data and insight that I can for you, but um, if, if I were you, if, if that's the direction you want to go, I'd contact ARP directly, tell them what you're trying to trying to do and see if they can help you out. Otherwise, I mean, the, the grade of the OEM bolts are, are really good. They're, they're a great bolt. It's just they're a bolt versus a stud and, you know, pulling, uh, going in and out of aluminum is definitely uh, 
less ideal than taking a nut off a stud. So uh, I think it's totally fine. Ford has a ton of hours on a lot of different cars out there without any failures on the oil pickup and the, and the main bolts. But if you want to go ARP, just make sure that you take care of that ahead of time because you're going to run into that problem uh, when you go to do it yourself. But other than that, I'll let you know and I'll update this video if anything happens, if I find out any weird things. But so far, everything looks good to go. Um, I'm waiting on one little part to... Uh, plug into the oil pan down there so that I can have my Peterson breather drain directly into the oil pan and, and then I'll be able to start the car. But like I said, I'll update the video if anything's weird, anything's wonky, or I learn anything new. Um, hopefully this video was helpful for you if you're doing something similar. Uh, hope to see you out on the track. Have a good one.